Our next speaker is William Silvers. Uh, he's a postdoctoral fellow in Shanghai Sun's lab, and he's going to talk about imaging hepatocellular carcinoma biomarkers with PET and a chemically induced rat model. I hope I got that right. All right. So, like we had mentioned, I'm going to be doing some imaging studies with hepatocellular carcinoma in a chemically induced rat model. Now, HCC is one of the more common malignancies worldwide, and it's typically derived from cirrhosis, which can be caused from hepatitis B, hepatitis C, diabetes, alcoholism, and uh, obesity. Um, now, at the early stages, they can be cured through tumor resection or even liver transplant, but at these late stages, typically they have a poor prognosis, especially when they become metastasized. One of the problems with imaging modalities is there's really no great imaging technique for detecting HCC. Um, one of the problems with ultrasounds and, say, CT is you have limited detection of these small lesions. Where positron emission tomography is sensitive, it's not very routinely used when it comes to imaging HCC. Now, PET could potentially aid in diagnosis, staging, identifying recurrence, uh, evaluating prognosis, differentiating tumors from cirrhosis, and possibly even helping with the treatment monitoring. Um, now, from the studies that have been performed, there's really no single radio tracer that's ideal for imaging HCC. And this is partly due to the intra inter uh, heterogeneity in the tumors. Um, now, just as an example, we have FDG which also has a very low sensitivity for detection with, with small tumors uh, with less than one centimeter diameter. This is an example of some of the common radio tracers that are used, FDG, carbon-11 acetates, C11-choline, and FLT. And you see that they're all specific for different subtypes of tumors where FDG is good for moderately uh, poorly differentiated tumors. Acetate is really only good for uh, well differentiated tumors. Now, sensitivity for all of them is not ideal, where acetate is at 87%, everything else is 70% or lower. What's nice about PET is you can actually start imaging specific pathways, and there's a lot of pathways to probe in tumors where something can be upregulated or downregulated. And I'm gonna go over four different radio tracers that I've been using for this, for this study. Um, two that have been known for HCC, and two that have been unknown. Now, the gold standard for, for PET is essentially FDG, where it's fluorodeoxyglucose, and you're essentially imaging this uh, glycolysis pathway. What else has been studied for HCC is imaging lipid metabolism, and that's used with carbon-11 acetate. And what I want to do, which is something new, is use C11 uh, glutamine which can image these amino acid transporters where the amino acids are taken up into the cell and then further converted into proteins. And finally, for the other last and I guess fourth radio tracer which hasn't been used before is F18 ISO1. It specifically binds to the sigma-2 receptor which is correlative to uh, cell proliferation. Now the model I'm using, it's a rat model and what I'm doing is I'm adding in nitrosodiethylamine at 0.01% in the drinking water. It'll drink the water for eight weeks. We'll replace that water with normal water. And then four weeks later, we get cirrhosis. And approximately nine weeks later, we start seeing tumor development. And I think what's nice about this model is you actually get some good heterogeneity with the tumor growth and the tumors that are formed. Now, I actually got pretty good tumor growth, and I got very consistent tumor growth. It's exponential. Um, each rat did develop typically two or more tumors, and generally it was probably five or more. And working with Dr. Curian at CUH, we were actually to observe that 7% were well differentiated, 43% were moderately differentiated, and 50% were poorly differentiated. KI67 was 37 plus or minus 14, and I think as most of us know, KI67 correlates to cell proliferation. So that's important for the uh, F18 ISO-1 radio tracer. 
So to start with the gold standard, FDG, um, it actually did provide the greatest um, tumor to liver ratio, which was 3.8. It also had a fairly high sensitivity of 89%, but this makes sense because FDG is good for moderate and poorly differentiated tumors. And if you go back to the last slide, there's approximately 90% of the tumors fall into that category. So this actually matches up very well with those results. For one of the new radio tracers I wanted to try, this was the carbon-11 glutamine. Um, it had moderate, say, not great, but modest uptake or modest tumor deliver ratio, which was 1.6. Based on the image, the maximum intensity projection, you, you, could, you could delineate where the tumor was um, compared to the background. Well, I think the most interesting aspect of the glutamine compared to FDG, um, this was done in the same rat and the next day, you can see where FDG actually had high uptake, where the glutamine had low uptake. So this might support an idea of doing a glutamine scan immediately followed by an FDG scan that might give you a little bit higher rate of detection with these uh, tumors. So one of the other rate of tracers that has been used before with HCC imaging was carbon-11 acetate. It provides, again, it's just a modest tumor to liver ratio of about 1.5, but it clearly delineates the tumor within the uh, liver. And one of the, the last rate of tracers that I studied, it, I did a little bit more extensive work with this one because I was a little bit more interested in it because I wanted to study proliferation, um, was the F18 ISO-1. It also had just a moderate tumor to liver of 1.7, but it also had a sensitivity of 89%, which kind of matches FDG. So just based on those results, we think that it's kind of specific for the poorly differentiated as well as the moderately differentiated. But what's interesting to me is that the tumors identified were actually quite small. You could see some of the very small tumors all the way down to seven millimeters cubed. So it had a very good almost resolution or sensitivity for detecting small tumors. So in conclusion, um, sort of demonstrated the feasibility of imaging um, HCC with some PET radio tracers, two that are known, the carbon-11 acetate and FDG, as well two that are unknown with the glutamine and, and F18 ISO-1. Uh, now each radio tracer may provide some different information towards the um, isoform of that, of that tumor, um, but F18 to ISO-1 seems to be more specific for poor, poorly and moderately differentiated tumors. So we can see from the detection sensitivity of FDG being similar to that of, of ISO-1. Now, I didn't have enough animals for doing the acetate and glutamine detection sensitivity, but that's certainly one of the plans for this model that we have. And you can see here, FDG of the four radio tracers tested certainly was the best when it comes to at least the tumor to uh, liver background, tumor to liver ratio. That's it. Is there any questions? Thanks, William. Good innovative work. The question I have is, uh, how did you define detection sensitivity? So we had we had MRI scans to go along with every PET scan, essentially. So, so is it a per animal detection of any hepatocellular carcinoma, or is it per tumor detection? I'd say per lesion identified through MRI. Okay, and then did you do any kind of combined detection sensitivity? I saw that you had the FDG was up mm -hmm. top, you had 89%, you had the ISO at 89%. What happened when you combined the two? It seemed like you'd be, they'd be augmenting, but I didn't see statistics on that. Right, right. No, I never got that far into the study. Uh, the animal model, it can be a little bit difficult to obtain. Um, so sometimes I die fast, sometimes I don't. So yeah, getting, and we have about eight more in production right now. So. Hopefully we can answer some of those. Thank you. Thank you very much.